I was on a road trip coming back from my vacation. The drive home was long, about 16 hours, but I was determined to make it in one go without having to buy a room at a hotel. As the sun started to set though, my eyes were getting really heavy. I forced myself to stay awake by snacking on some food I brought with, but that only lasted so long and I knew I'd eventually need a break. At least just a nap for an hour or something, but maybe even to cut my losses and sleep until morning. The road was empty though. There were no towns or anything in sight that I could stop at. I zoomed out on the map and tried to see what places were coming up, but the only close town was an hour away. I really wasn't sure if I could safely make it there, and after a couple more minutes, I knew I couldn't. I saw a sign for a gas station half a mile down and turned off the highway. The gas station was the only building on this exit, sitting at the corner of an intersection with two deserted roads leading to what seemed to be nowhere. Pulling into the parking lot, I also noticed that the main building had all its lights off. The actual gas portion was still lit and looked like it was still usable, but I guess they don't have any workers there overnight, which made me a lot less comfortable. I parked right on the side and spent the next five minutes keeping an eye out and making sure this place was safe. From what it looked, nobody came here. No cars came in for gas, and not a single car even passed by on the road. It was an eerie place to be, that I won't argue with, but I didn't necessarily feel unsafe because nobody was here. I leaned my seat all the way back, turned off my car, and fell asleep. I don't remember checking the time before I fell asleep, but when I opened my eyes, it was 2 a.m. I was in that foggy state of waking up, unsure why my eyes opened, until I heard a clanking sound from outside. I turned my head toward the main part of the gas station. There was a man standing behind one of the pumps. I could see him moving around and messing with something, but the pump was blocking most of my view. What I didn't see, though, was his car. Not in the parking section or by the pumps. It was just him. I looked around once more, seeing again that there were absolutely no places within miles of here. The man continued messing with something, then after a minute he turned around and walked away. I lost sight of him as the gas station blocked my view, but it looked like he was going toward the road. After a few minutes, I assumed he was gone for sure, but I still had no idea what he was even doing. It made me a little bit uneasy, but I was too tired to keep thinking about it. I slowly dozed off, but it wasn't for very long before I shot awake to the sound of something against my car. I turned my head and saw a man staring into my car through the window right next to me. My heart almost stopped, listening to them trying to open the doors. I didn't know what to do. The way the man was acting, it almost seemed like he didn't even know I was inside, but he was looking through the window, so unless the glare was too bad to see through, this man had to have some really bad intentions. I stayed quiet, but then the man abruptly turned around and went up to the side of the gas station. He knelt down, picking something up, and I immediately turned on my car and floored it in reverse. The man spun around with what looked like a metal pipe in his hand and stared at me as I drove away. My heart was beating so fast, I was now fully awake, and I stayed that way for the rest of the drive. What that man was trying to do is something I'm happy not to know, but the circumstances of it all were just terrifying. The man clearly had been there before and was doing something with the gas pumps too. It looked like he was only seconds away from smashing my window and getting in, and what would have happened afterwards is unknown. This was on a regular weekday night. I was at home by myself, drinking a cup of coffee while staying up late in my room to get some work done. I had a tight deadline, and working late this night would make the rest of the week a lot easier on me. 
I was on my laptop at my desk, really focused and slightly tired, but my focus was broken when I heard a thump downstairs. I looked over at the doorway to my room where the sound echoed from, but remembered that it was raining outside and that the sound was probably just the house creaking in the rain and wind. I continued working, only to be interrupted again a moment later by another thump. I got up and walked to the bottom of the steps. All the lights were off, but I waited for the sound to come again so I could try and locate where it was, just to make sure it wasn't anything serious. I was still tired and had no reason to believe this was anything other than the house making sounds, and after a minute of waiting, I went back upstairs. Waiting around for something that was likely nothing was just a waste of my time, which I wanted to be spending on work so that I could get to bed. I went back to my laptop and worked for another hour and a half, not hearing any more sounds from downstairs aside from a few small creaks every once in a while. It was close to 1am and I was just finishing up what I needed to get done for the night when another thump echoed through the house. This one was much louder and sounded like it came from the bottom of the steps. I got up and rushed over to the stairs, a little more concerned now, but nothing was down there. I went down a few steps and looked over the railing, but the house was now just as quiet and empty as ever. The rain was still coming down, but this seemed to be far too loud and frequent than anything rain could be causing. After waiting again though, I got impatient and went back to my room. I had no idea what was going on, but I still couldn't see how it could be anything more than the house creaking. I sat back down at my desk, and it was almost right away that another thump rang through the house, this time sounding from right in the hall outside my room. I looked over at the half-open doorway, and not even a second later, a figure walked past it down the hall. My heart stopped for a moment as I felt a wave of shock run through me. I heard them walk into one of the spare bedrooms, and figuring they had to know I was home already, I ran up to my door and locked it shut. The footsteps stopped instantly, then began quickly going back into the hallway and right up to my door. I backed up and tried to find anything to use as a weapon. In this moment, I probably could have called 911, but I think I was too worried of something happening before they would have time to arrive. I picked up a pair of scissors from my desk as the man banged on the other side of the door. He then started to what I think was kicking it, because it sounded as if the door could snap out of the frame at any second. But then he stopped. I heard heavy breathing from against the door, then footsteps going down the stairs. I got my phone from my desk and called 911 as their steps started making their way through the downstairs hallways. A door closed, I think it was the back door, and then the house was silent. Police actually came really quick, getting to my house in just two or three minutes, and I almost had another scare when I heard footsteps sprinting out of the house. I think by closing the door, he was trying to trick me into thinking he left, which kind of worked, but I was still too scared to go downstairs without the police being there. Anyway, I ran out and got the police, but whoever that man was had already run off and even with more cars patrolling the neighborhood, they never found him. There's so many questions to it that will haunt me for the rest of my life probably, especially since he's out there right now and could be stalking me or waiting for another time to break in. His intent is not clear, but the investigators seem to think he had broken into the house in the morning, possibly while I was out of the house. It's likely he was waiting for me to go to sleep before doing whatever it was he planned, but if he had been hiding for several hours, I don't think it would have been just to steal a few things. Before I get into this next story, I want to talk about an important sponsor for today's video. Aura is an advanced online digital security service allowing you to scan and remove your personal data from various online sources, including scam centers, the dark web, and data brokers. These entities profit from your private information, 
making it crucial to eliminate your data from their reach. And Aura makes it as simple as possible for us to do this. With their free trial, I was registered in minutes and had Aura scan and remove my data with just a few clicks. They notified me about dozens of places all across the internet where they found my personal data, like my full name, phone number, and address. And without Aura, I never would have known. Afterwards, Aura continuously monitors my data, instantly notifying me of any issues that arise and enabling swift resolution. They also include a feature to encrypt your home's Wi-Fi, ensuring the security of all your connected devices. In today's world, personal identity and data theft are unfortunately widespread, affecting a significant number of US citizens, with millions falling victim each year, resulting in huge financial losses. With Aura, you can have the utmost confidence in your security and prevention measures. For a completely free 14-day trial, visit Aura.com whispered or scan the provided QR code. During this trial, you can discover if your personal data has been compromised, remove your data from multiple prominent platforms, and securely monitor your personal identity. I highly recommend using this free trial to see if your data has been stolen and to keep your identity secure. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video and keeping our personal data secure. I work four days a week on 10 to 12 hour overnight shifts which means I have to sleep during the day and be up at night at least four days a week. However, switching up my sleep schedule on my days off usually causes me to get much worse sleep and just feel tired, so I started sticking to the same schedule all week. I'd usually get in bed around noon and wake up at 8 p.m. It was hard to get used to, but I had to do it for work, and after a few months, it wasn't too terrible. On one of my days off a few months ago, I got up at 9pm, having breakfast and doing some chores, then went out for a run just before midnight. This was a somewhat normal looking day off for me. Sometimes I would have my lazy days, but for the most part, I'd try to go for a run within the first few hours of my day. My house is right next to a forest preserve, so I take the same path every time. It's basically just a big loop inside the forest preserve, and I'll go around it as many times as I need before I feel like I'm done. I started going along this trail, looping around two full times before a man appeared on the path. When I first noticed him, he was too far down to see well, but it looked like he was just walking. As I started to get closer though, I realized he wasn't moving. He was wearing a dark sweatshirt and baggy pants, facing my direction as I approached him. When I passed by, he slowly moved his head to follow, like he was watching me. I looked back and saw him still standing there. It creeped me out and had me thinking for a couple minutes, but when I looped around again, he was gone. I don't know if maybe he took a shortcut through the woods. The exit was on the opposite side from where he was standing though and he definitely didn't pass me on the path. Him having appeared and left in such a strange way gave me a bad feeling, causing me to cut the run short and head home. I left the forest and jogged through the street to my house. When I got inside, I chugged some water and sat down, only to be startled up by a sound right outside my front door. It was almost 1am, so nobody should have been at my house. I walked up and looked through the peephole. A man was on my porch, and I recognized him from his dark sweatshirt as the same man from the forest preserve. I felt my stomach drop as I watched him just stand there. He didn't knock or ring the doorbell. I must have watched him for a whole minute, seeing the man do nothing more than glance around a few times. I started to get really creeped out thinking about how he had to have followed me home and was clearly not behaving normally. I walked back to my kitchen and quietly dialed 911, telling them about a possible stalker that was outside my house. After reporting it, I went back to the door and the man was still there. He stood in the same place, 
glancing around and never knocking or anything for the next 10 minutes. Even when the police car pulled up, he didn't run. He acted like nothing was wrong and gave no explanation for what he was doing at my house or why he followed me. Almost equally as terrifying, they couldn't actually hold the guy under arrest because he hadn't really done anything yet. It was clear his behavior was off and something was wrong with him, but it wasn't enough to do anything about it. I don't know why that guy followed me and creepily stood outside my house, but with him behaving the way he was, I wouldn't doubt it if he had something horrible in mind.